the four years before we took office, country after country fell under the Soviet yoke. Since January 20th, 1981, not one inch of soil has fallen to the communists. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. My fellow Americans, this has been a busy and eventful week for Nancy and me. This one was two months late, and it's 1,057 pages long, weighing 14 pounds. Now, that was a total of 43 pounds of paper and ink. Congress shouldn't send another one of these. And if you do, I will not sign it. Officially in retirement from the office of the president, I am still busy, as you know, promoting the dear principles on which our great country was founded. That's why I am extremely proud to accept the Thomas Jefferson Achievement Award from the American Legislative Exchange Council on behalf of the millions of Americans who shared my vision and values throughout my administration and who continue to do so today. And to each of you lawmakers and businessmen, I say thank you for allowing me to serve with you in promoting Jeffersonian ideals. For it is you, the members of the American Legislative Exchange Council, who should be honored for your untiring dedication and service to promoting Mr. Jefferson's ideals. Like Tom Jefferson, you and I are common sense conservatives leaders who apply common sense and basic American values to the challenges facing your communities, your states, and our nation. These are thrilling times. During the last several months, we have seen the American ideals of individual liberty, free enterprise, and responsible self-government taking root throughout Eastern Europe, in Central America, and in the Soviet Union itself. You and I, who worked so hard to preserve America as the beacon of hope for all the world, should rejoice. An age of hope and opportunity has begun. Today, we are witnessing the reaffirmation of self-government around the world, and we should. But we need not look only to foreign shores to find cause for celebration, because here in America, we have much to celebrate. Throughout my public life, I have worked to return government to the states, to be led by men and women like you. During my administration, we made great progress toward that goal. Today, we can rejoice because the same reaffirmation of self-government that is beginning to flourish in the once captive nations is also beginning to flourish in our sovereign states. This offers America great hope and opportunity. Today, we know that many of the critical challenges facing our nation will be met in the states. The critical questions of our day will be decided by state legislators. How our children are educated, how we are protected from crime, how we safeguard our environment while building a strong and growing economy, how we end the scourge of drugs, how we care for those who are in need. So you have great responsibilities. Great, but not too great. Throughout my administration, I knew I could count on Alex State's legislators as we worked together, as soldiers in a common cause, to unleash the private sector, rebuild our economy, strengthen our defenses, and reaffirm our values. Now, with a new federalism firmly established and government refocused on the states, you must carry on our work. The achievements of ALEC and the talents of your members 
convinces me that you are up to the challenge that our new federalism can lead to a new renaissance for America. It is symbolic that ALEC hold its first annual meeting of the new decade in Boston, a city steeped in our nation's history and its scientific and technological achievements. The history of this city and of our nation demonstrates that when dedicated public officials work in partnership with inspired business leaders, we can achieve sustained prosperity, great technological innovation, and an economy second to none. ALEC has forged a unique partnership between state legislators and leaders from the corporate and business community. This partnership offers businessmen the extraordinary opportunity to apply their talents to solve our nation's problems and build on our opportunities. Working together as a team, you serve our nation well. So as you prepare for the challenges and opportunities which lie ahead, I encourage you to remain committed to the values and ideals which inspired Jefferson and which later called me to public life. Values which are as valid in today's information age as they were when Jefferson crafted the Declaration of Independence. You know, as I looked out the window of the Oval Office during the last days of my presidency, I reflected on the shining city upon a hill. I've spoken of this shining city all my political life. In my mind, it's a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God-blessed, and teeming with people who seek virtue and work for the common good in peace and harmony. A city with free ports that hum with commerce and creativity. And if there must be city walls, the walls have doors and the doors are open to anyone with the will and heart to get there. I applaud you, the members of ALEC, and the millions of your fellow Americans who, like your forefathers, put your mind, body, and soul into building this magnificent, shining city we call the United States of America. May the warmth and vibrancy of its people continue to serve as a guiding beacon for all the world. Nancy and I send our love and best wishes to you and your families and fervently hope that you will make this decade and the coming century an even better era for America. Keep Tom Jefferson's ideals alive and well at ALEC. Follow his timeless values and you will serve our nation well. God bless you.